And are you so, are you recording right? Yeah. You've yes. been recording this whole nonsense, but yeah. <laughs> fifteen minutes of nonsense. Four minutes of coronavirus. Oh my goodness. Here we go. That's my notes. What is that? One sentence? Two. Well, two plus someone's name. Great. Huh? <laughs> Let's get started. Hello and welcome to Filling in the Gaps. I'm Justin. I'm Darren. Today we are going to discuss a game called Creepy Tale. Creepy Tale is what I would refer to as an atmospheric adventure game. It is in some ways simplistic, in some ways incredibly difficult. It is a game where there isn't any voice dialogue. You are given some speech bubbles with images, kind of GIFs, and uh, they're animated sometimes. So there's two or three images to show you what you need to know. It's an interesting game. It's also a fairly cheap game. It's $5 at base. And as we're recording this, it's on one of its sales at 70% off, which makes it roughly like $1.50, which is, I think is what I paid for it. I think the cheap price was the selling point for me. I can't think of why else I would have gotten in so early. Yeah. And that sale price is pretty much what it should be. I think. I think $5 is a little bit too much, to be honest. Well, that ties into our dollar an hour that yeah. we go for. But the game is only a year old. I think that when it's new, I have a lot more leeway for that. Mm. It's when a game is 10 years old and they're still trying to charge a lot yeah. that I don't really appreciate that. But when it's new, I mean, new at $5, I get it. And it's also the type of thing we know. I mean, we make Steam sale videos twice a year. We know that those percentages, that discount is something that is a huge selling point. If you started off at $2, you have nowhere to go on sale. <laughs> yeah. The game is very positively rated overall with 975 reviews, mostly positive in the recent with 45. As I said, it's not that old. It's just from February of 2020. So just last year, but I got in on this pretty early on. Developer and publisher... Creepy Brothers, which is usually, as I've said before, I think <laughs> if you name your company after your first product, oftentimes that's a bad sign. But I think in this case, at least as far as this game is concerned, maybe that's okay. And you can do a lot with Creepy Brothers if you're going to be the grim fairy tales of the game world. There's a lot you can do with that. And actually, I think that that name works. I will say this. I took about two hours to play it the first time, but I used a lot of walkthrough help. I found a lot of the puzzles to be very abstract, or we just weren't given good guidance for what to do, and some things were just so totally out of the box from the stuff that I had seen before, which is great, but it's also frustrating to play. So it's it's this weird mix of, I totally respect the puzzles and the fact that they are doing things that I have not seen before, but... They're also not teaching me anything about how to get to those. And some of the things are, find this thing, even though there's nothing on the screen to indicate that there's anything there. So you start to have to click everywhere. I'll be interested to see what you think was novel and kind of unique, because a lot of this game I'd seen before. This game draws heavily off of an old Flash game called Samarost, which you can still get, or Samarost, however you want to pronounce it. Similar in style, similar in puzzle, similar, hopefully, when we get around to talking about Machinarium or Machinarium, however you want to pronounce it, that style of puzzles and that, that, that style of, like, adventure game. So, yeah, I'd like to know what ones you thought were really unique. My problem was that the tutorial just isn't good enough. It's like, there's bits where it asks you to fail a number of times before it's like, oh, you got to press this button. It's like, well, you could have told me to press that button in the first place. So, yeah, it's got some tutorial issues. For sure. But yeah, as far as gameplay goes, yeah, it's, it looks pretty. Yeah, I like the game and part two is coming out and I'll probably end up buying that one as well. Yeah, I haven't played Samarost, so it's very likely when I do because they just put it out for free recently. Did, yeah. right? So I do have it in my library, but I haven't played it. Maybe I will find, oh, this is exactly like these so other no, games. No, they copied, they copied Creepy Tail. <laughs> I won't think that. I know... No, it's like 10 years... That must be like 10, 10, at least 10 years old. They're on their third one, I think, now. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I would definitely look at dates before I start going, oh, that one copied that yeah. one. <laughs> I've encountered enough 
music covers that I thought were original and then found out, oh, they're not original, that I'm kind of wary of anything that I think is truly original and then somebody's going to tell me it came from somewhere else like you've just done today. I remember hearing Vanilla Fudge for the first time, that You Just Keep Me Hanging On song. I thought it was always like Donna Summer and the Supremes. It's by, it's by like three white hippie guys. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I would recommend the game, especially if you get it on sale. I think that it is fun. It is another of those short experiences that I'm craving now just because I don't have time a lot of times or patience (laughs) to go through some that just take hours and hours so it's nice occasionally to just play something that you can do in a couple days and be done if you don't want spoilers now is the time for you to head out because we're about to talk about the game and it is very difficult to talk about this game without giving away everything as far as story and particularly the puzzles so if you do not want any spoilers here's your warning when you played this, did you play it through a second time? Yeah, I've completed the, all the achievements to, to 100% for this, yeah. Did you notice the chapters? So when I was able no. to restart it, it said chapter 1, 2, 3, 4. But it seemed like there were 8 chapters, and yet I've in game... i mine now. Yeah, which is... I, I just don't know if maybe originally they had broke it up more into 8 chapters, and then story-wise decided that it was better as 3. Definitely not play-wise, better as three, because if you get halfway through chapter three, like I did, and then you say, oh, it's time for dinner, when you come back, you've got to start from the beginning of chapter three again. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. So there's no save system anymore. I don't know. I I agree. And I don't have a time machine, so I can't go back. But I'm pretty sure there was a better save system in the past and more chapters. Or maybe that was the save system. It just broke them into bits. In chapter one, called Beautiful Butterfly, there are Two boys collecting mushrooms. And this is pretty much all the tutorial you really get. Yeah. They list the three buttons you're going to have to do. Here's what you use to move. Here's what you use to interact with everything. And jump. And that's it. Yeah. Which is fine. I like simple games and simple mechanics and seeing how much you can do with that. And so I really appreciate that. You also have to, before you can move to the next screen, you have to pick up the mushroom. So you're having to collect those. In the next screen, there's a rock I think you have to jump over or a log you have to jump over. So if you haven't learned what the jump button is, you have to learn it before you do the next part. It takes away the variables of what knowledge you should have going into the first puzzle. I like that, but I really wanted more of it. But maybe I didn't need it. Maybe if I'd played other games like Samaros or Machinarium before, I would have been okay. Uh, I don't think so because I still think that the tutorial system for the game is flawed. There are other buttons that you need to press. And when you get a chance to press them, they're not really announced. At least I didn't see them announced. Like when you play the, the flute thing, that's not actually shown to you. That's a, another button that's not listed at the beginning of the game. And that is not tutorialized as far as I could see. It was just like all of a sudden I pressed the button. I saw the button off to the corner and it had the button labeled on it. But I was like, oh, I got a big monitor, man. I don't have to look around for that. <laughs> but no, it's not It's not there. And also, in other games, like sometimes there'll be a highlighted window or there'll be sparkles or something. In this game, you have to kind of guess what to click on. I mean, you've played enough adventure games anyway, uh, apart from, like, yeah, old school ones like Samaros and things like that to know that... Well, I have played old school ones, just not those. Yeah, but I mean, it's different. You know, those other games, I'm just saying that they've done it better. This game is like... It's tried to be upfront about its instructions, but then it's kind of like given up. By the time you get to the hut, it's like, I tell you what, man, you just figure out. I don't know. I don't know why they chose not to just give us the little bit extra, like, oh, you can click on things, like knock on doors and look through windows. Otherwise, you might be wandering around that area, which I definitely was for the first time I played it. I remember going like, okay, so the brother goes in the house and I'm like, I went off to the side, can't go this way. What am I doing? And then eventually I'm like, oh, I can look through a window. I didn't have that problem, Uh, as far as I can remember. Were you just walking then? You weren't trying to click on anything? Well, I mean, by point and click, hand was idle. So I was like, there's nothing to click on or something. I don't know. I played it like a year ago. So I was just wandering around going, what do I have to pick up? I was looking for things to pick up. I was looking for something to smash the window with, something to throw or something like that. I was looking for an item, but I couldn't find it. And it wasn't until... I don't know how I found it, because like I said, it was like, it was a year ago. And eventually it's like, oh, you can look through the window. 
I didn't have a problem with that. And in fact, I don't really have a problem with the, we're going to give you flute and a new button. But maybe that's because I saw the button and I, I didn't, didn't yeah. look over. I didn't, I didn't ignore <laughs> what was going on on the screen. I didn't know what to do with the troll. So basically, you have these kind of hairy troll characters that kidnap your brother or your friend, whoever the other character is, and takes them into their cottage, locks the door. I could knock on the door. I could get the troll to come outside. Well, wouldn't actually go outside, right? Would just peek outside and then go back in. I didn't think, oh, I can use the mushrooms in some way, even though I'm pretty sure they have a bubble over his head with a dreaming of a mushroom or something. Oh, did they? I didn't notice this time because I knew that what you had to do, so I just went straight for it. See, that's the problem. Playing through a second time, I, I was rushing through, so I don't know if I was paying as much attention as I was before. Yeah. Because this had stumped me so much the first time, it stuck in my brain. It's the stuff that you come across and you solve it easily that, well, at least for me, it's just gone. So those are yeah. the ones that I would have more trouble with. Things that I was really stuck with, is I know exactly what I need <laughs> yeah. to do here. And this is one of those. Oh, okay. Pick up the mushroom from before, put it on the stump, sneak in and get into the chest while he's out eating his mushroom. He will come back in, lock the door with a bone, <laughs> presumably of a course. human bone. Yeah. Sit down. And the butterfly that we had seen, the golden one floating through the air, which is what our characters followed, is actually sort of the soul of the beast. Mm. And it flutters away and flies out through a hole in the ceiling. It's creepy and beautiful at the same time. Yeah, just that comes out of their eyes and the light just goes out of their eyes and then they're just dead or sleeping, whatever. You need to get out and here's traditional adventure game stuff. Take the bone, fix a stool. stool so that you can bring the stool over to the table. Though I will say the first time I played it, I was afraid that thing was going to wake up all the time. That the butterfly would just keep coming yeah. back. So I kept watching the ceiling. Stay away, butterfly. Stay away. But you jump up, you get the key, you're out. Now, it's a bit weird that you're just going out the back of the cabin. You could have just walked around it. Bye. <laughs> maybe. Maybe it's a portal to it's another portal. universe. Yeah. I mean, it sure seems like it because you're not in the same place you were before. But that whole introduction part is going back to what we were talking about before. I could pick up the mushroom and I'd use the mushroom, but again, I couldn't. So I knew when you give me an object and I can place it somewhere, I know, okay, I'm on the right track, but then it's like waiting for something to happen. And eventually, yeah, I must have just started clicking on things with the Z key. Did you use controller for this? Yeah, I did. Yeah. So yeah, there's a whole bunch of controls mapped out. You can play this on an upside down keyboard in space, but pretty much you've got the, the Wasid buttons, you've got the arrow buttons, you've got ZC, ZXC to do something, Q and E do something. So it's mapped out for like any different play style that you want almost. It's weird. Oh, so... They all do the same things. They it's all just, do the same it, things. It's okay. just mapped left, right, top left, top right kind of thing. And so you can play it almost using any configuration. But there's no binding keys option again like that is, so <laughs> they did that for you everything you can possibly <laughs> want it's already bound so it's no messing with anything else and after i got in and then and then i get inside and then oh i'm dead because i didn't open the chest and then i got inside the chest and like stupidly oh i'm dead because i didn't realize you could close the chest <laughs> and so you got to get in and close it it's just like and i like that when something is obvious i don't mind dying over and over again but as long as i'm making progress and that with this part once i was inside i was like okay i'm making progress and i'm, I'm okay i'm on track now and so through the portal into the back of the forest this will take us to a part that was very frustrating for me the first time but the second time not such a big deal run along but make sure that you jump over the pit because if you jump in the pit well their spikes still kill you yeah so you need to jump across push the log over so that you can jump onto that, which is a bit of an issue. The controls there falling onto the log can be a bit tricky. It took me three times, even the second time through. Yeah, there's a hitbox off to the left of it where you can still die. There is a sleeping hedgehog with three eyes yeah. off to the right, which will eat you if it is aware that you are there. If so you wake it up by standing on its mushrooms. Yes, the mushrooms glow and they also seem to give power of some kind to the plant off to the right which is what you need to do you need to pick up the plant the mushroom mm -hmm. and then plant, plant it plant it by the leafy plant so that it will grow strong mm -hmm. 
And this is a time where they did give you a hint through the thought bubble. Yeah. Which I'm assuming they added those when the playtesters couldn't figure it out. I couldn't figure it out. I didn't know what you had to do for this part either. I had to look up a walkthrough for this part because I didn't realize that you could plant things. Like I didn't realize you could plant it in the ground. And I didn't think to, well, plant it next to that tree either. Okay, fair enough. The spores from the fungus activate the tree and stuff. So, fair enough. This part I didn't have a problem with. This is the next part that really got me. You do need to do it quickly because that hedgehog will come after you. Pretty fast, yeah. And you have to (laughs) jump, 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 get onto the bridge. Well, what's left of it. What's left of the bridge. Now, there is where we entered the spike log area. There is a bit of treasure off to the left. Was there anything in there that we needed to do? Yeah, there was a red herring in there. That's all. Because <laughs> like, I, I was waking up the guy and running over to there. I bet you there's something there. I, I can lead him there and he'll get distracted or something. Or I had the exact same thought. And I don't know how many times the first time I played through, I tried to get him there. And this time, I, was like, uh, I don't think there's anything over yeah. there. Let me keep going and see if I need to be there. I thought there might be some sort of achievement there. Right. If there is, I don't think I got it. I don't think so. There is a bridge with only two boards. I knew right away what I needed to do here. Move across, step, step, step. Mm -hmm. What I did not know was the next part. The next part is the one that really got me. So there is a pole that has fallen down that I guess was originally supporting the bridge. You take that, that doubles as a lever where you can raise a full bridge up. You walk across and one of those hedgehogs is screaming at you from a hook. And that wakes up this other antlered troll Mm -hmm. who will chase after you. And this I need to walk through for, because I can't tell you the number of times the first time I tried to get to the lever and make it fall in, because I could tell that's what was supposed to happen. Yeah. And it's coming at you so quickly yeah. that you wouldn't logically think, well, I can keep running. It will tire out and start to go slower after that. Yeah. I think they made some bad choices with the animation here of making it come on so quickly. Yeah. Well, otherwise they wouldn't have a chance to do the puzzle that way. But I think they should have just done the puzzle the way that that we wanted it, you know? I mean, I'm not saying like, oh, we're so smart and they're so dumb. Our way is better kind of thing. I'm not trying to say that. But it's like, once you die a few times and you get the little speech bubble, it's like, oh, run. It's like, I am running. So I'm looking because I'm a keyboard and mouse player. I'm looking, I'm pressing shift because I'm like, is there a sprint button? I haven't been told about buttons already. So I'm, I'm looking for a sprint button. I'm going to the settings, seeing if I can see the key map. There's no key map. So I'm guessing where the sprint button is. There's no sprint button. And I cannot get to that lever quick enough to pull it. Say, oh, you have to run all the way back to the bridge, jump on the bridge, and then it gets bored of you. It's flown the whole way across here. doesn't use land to walk, but it can't float across and get you across the bridge. That's dumb. And so it suddenly gets bored of you. As soon as it turns its back, you can just jump off and you can walk. You can be right on its tail. It will never turn around and eat you or grab you. And then you pull the lever as it's walking back across the bridge to go back to its little snooze. And then you drop it in. I don't know. I hated this puzzle absolutely loathed it and this time around my second playthrough you know how you were saying before you remembered things that you got stuck on i completely forgot this part again and i got stuck on it again and i rage quit the first time thinking like there's something wrong with this game and then i sudden like slowly realized like oh yeah that's right you've got to go the whole way back but yeah i think a simple slow him down just pull it what's the point of going all the way back there just to come back and the dumbness that he can't he can float but he can't float over a bridge come on chapter two Obscure side of the forest. This is another part that just completely baffled me. There are just some things that were hidden here or things I just didn't realize I could take that gave me problems and they gave me problems the second time through as well. This is chapter two, you just, yeah? This is chapter two. This is where there's the scared creature who will hide under the bed. I like this. This is probably my favorite chapter of the whole game, for sure. Okay. Tell me why. I like the puzzles in it. Finally, I'm getting into a groove and like I understand, like, okay, I've got to look for things to click on them. Nothing is highlighted, so I've got to make my own way. Now I understand the game's logic and the game's rules. I mean, some of the some of them are really adventure game puzzle logic, like put the fire out, get a stick to move the coals to find a rune, you know? <laughs> it's, it's a bit daft. That part really got me. And even the second time, because I just never think to click on that stick. Yeah, and why would you? Because it's 
bit of a branch of a tree <laughs> and, there's, and there's nothing but trees in the background and a fairly creepy guy that always peeks out from behind the trees to look at you i kind of liked him they changed his design as well for some reason i don't know why yeah they changed i was looking at a playthrough last night and the part before this the long bridge the hedgehog was in a cage he wasn't like, just hooked so oh, like have, from dead by daylight kind of <laughs> that, that's what it is spiked. now but originally it was just in a cage oh, so okay. they obviously have changed little things throughout right okay because yeah they definitely changed that guy behind the trees because he looked more like a kind of salad fingers character now he just looks like a generic ghosty creature but no yeah i like this one because there's yeah there's more puzzle bits and i liked even the the witch, uh, like I think chapter two ends with the witch. That's right. And so well, this, but this, let's not get to the witch yet. But this, but the, yeah, this whole section was yeah, it was more puzzle based, and that's why I liked it. There's just a lot here that didn't seem to hit the logic button for me. Not in retrospect, but the first time. Like, oh, okay, I need to move this pot. I can tell that, mm-hmm. but I didn't think. Oh, I'm going to grow a mushroom in five seconds, and that's going to be a bouncing thing. Right. I mean, finding the mushroom in the first place is a problem. We don't ever do that again, do we? Grow a mushroom? No, I don't think so, no. And that's part of the issue, is, okay, if you had it in this puzzle, because this is going to come in handy again later, multiple times later, but just to do it now, just so that I can jump up and pick up a needle, it just doesn't feel like enough. You have this creepy creature that I can wave to, that's scared of me, that's always running to hide, that... I think I should be interacting with more. So I kept thinking that there was something more I was supposed to be doing. I thought, oh, I need to cook the meat for the creature, and then it will give me something. Right. Or I need to try and get up to the bed before it does so that it won't crawl under the bed and it will do something else. I'm thinking different adventure game logic. Right. And I think that it's a bit on them for making it look so enticing, but it's also a bit on me for thinking differently but finding that stone finding the stone so that you can <laughs> fix the altar i don't know i even the second time through is i know what i have to do i know i have to find that to fix it because that annoyed me so much the first time it just seems stupid yeah i do like the sacrifice at the end though oh we have to give it blood and we have to give it meat and then lightning comes down and that's what powers the door yeah but again we were never told that though either and it's like that would have been good to know a little bit more I was stuck trying to get that dog or whatever, whatever that body is. It's a dog or a pig or something, but trying to get that on the spit on top of the fire for the longest time. I was too, even this time, that was my initial instinct because I thought, okay, yeah, well, it's right here. They clearly go together, but they don't. Yeah, and once I put the fire out with the water, I was like, oh no, how do I relight the fire? So now I'm looking for a flint or something like that. It's just, I don't know. It's just the way that they chose to write the puzzle. And yeah, I mean, a lot of things get used only once and never come back. So no big deal to me anyway. The Witch's Home. Let's talk about The Witch's Home. I like The Witch's Home, but I don't like the way The Witch's Home plays. It's just that. It's a bit of a stealth thing. Your timing has to be good. Your timing has to be perfect. Yeah. There is a point where it just has to be perfect. And even the second playthrough... I ran this part like 10 times and I couldn't get it. And this is where I stopped. I rage quit. I went, well, I've already beaten this before. There's no need for me to suffer through this again. (laughs) I can just go watch it. And I, I did because I know from being stuck in it the first time, exactly what I need to do. Yeah. And a lot of this level I like, it is very intuitive. Oh, there's a big cupboard. I should hide in there when she's not there. And she'll walk past. Once you start to see her pattern, you mm-hmm. can pick that up very easily. Run through, grab the flint or fire starter, grab the bucket of water, get down. I was able to do that by the second time this time because I knew what I was doing. Uh-huh. I'm down there. I start the fire. I put the water over it. I look at the painting quick. I grab the mushrooms, make the poison. All good. Took me a second to remember where the key was, but got that. No problem. This is just the second one because the first one, I think I waited too long and she caught me. Right. Boy, is she fast. She's pretty fast. (laughs) There's no way to get away from her. You get the next part and that's where I get stuck every time. And this is the part I hate. Okay. Going back up, having to do the stealth again backwards, having to hide, wait for her to go, wait for her to come back into the room. Like, that's 
the other annoying thing is just there's a lot of waiting time for this and there's no save point, no checkpoint. So every time you die, you have to start over at the beginning and you have to wait for her to do her two room pattern yeah. before you can move on. So I can get the jar no problem uh -huh. every time and then I get back in the cabinet and then when she she walks back in where we're hiding, she picks something off the shelf, she goes back in, then she goes into the other room and every time when I get out of the cabinet, she just sees me. Ah, uh, did you leave the door open of the cabinet? Oh, uh, maybe. That's, what, that's why. What do you mean? Yeah, after you pick up the jar, you have to close the cabinet because she knows her house. So if you leave the cabinet door open, she automatically finds you. Oh, well, then it's my mistake. Then I thought that it was just... It's part of the puzzle. You have to open the cabinet, take the bottle, then you got to remember to close the cabinet. Okay, I'll try it again tonight and see. Because that was just frustrating me because I thought that it was just something wrong with the timing. No, no. Because that was going to be one of my points of a problem with the game is if you're like me and you click the button too many times because you're in a hurry, so basically the order is... You open the cabinet, you take the thing, and then so you click, click, click three times. Open, take the bottle, close. But if you click it again, you'll open the cabinet one more time. And then for some reason, all of a sudden, you can't close it anymore. And so you're screwed. And so she'll always find you every time. If you click it four times really quickly by mistake because you're in a hurry, you're automatically dead. Because you cannot, you're not allowed to close it again. So you can only open, close, and open. That's it. Well, that's a problem. It's a huge problem. The other problem for me is their choice to make you blind when you're in the cabinet. That's, I don't know, that's okay. But if I saw her animation and saw her looking at the cabinet that's open, the little one that I left open, and that's why she catches me, then I would know what the heck was going on. Mm. Oh yeah, true, true, yeah. I, every time, thought there's just something wrong with the game. Right, okay. If you go in, as soon as she goes in, if, you, if you're quick off the mark and you jump out of the closet like as soon as she's gone, then you'll see her look at the cabinet and her face changes like, what? And then she'll come directly to you. All right, well, maybe I... Just like one second you're missing probably, man. Maybe I should have left sooner then. The thing was, leave a millisecond too soon and she'll she catch catches you. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I guess she's a witch, so it makes sense, like, to have a picture of, of a poison above your bed. <laughs> like, yeah. who sleeps with a picture of three mushrooms above their bed? It's just very adventure game logic. I'm, I'm like, fine with that I'm one. okay with that. I like that puzzle, to be honest, because there's all these mushrooms laid out, and, I mean, I'd rather just pick them up altogether rather than one at a time and put them in the, the pot, but uh, maybe this makes it easier for the player to understand, I guess. I don't know. Well, I think that it's the idea that it's a recipe and it needs to be done in order. In order, yeah. And if you pick up all three, the game isn't designed with a normal inventory system where you click each thing. It just does it automatically. Yeah. So you need to only have one at a time. I kind of understand that one. I did have trouble the first time realizing how to get the mushroom. Well, all right, yeah. I'm grabbing it. And you got to pull it off screen. You have to pull it off screen, which... Is very intuitive once you know what's going on. But the first time, I was like, well, just pick it up. Yeah, I've got it. What do I do now? Yeah. <laughs> what button do I press to put it in my inventory? Yeah. yeah, so that's the witch. You get to take the poison. You put it in the vial. You poison her, and she dies. You take the key from her neck, and now you can escape the witch's house. Now comes the part with the flute. So yes. you're going to find a flute in a tree. There is, was it like a gold, a gold bar or Jelly something? bean or something. <laughs> it looked like a jelly bean to me. That gets taken up higher, door. right? Out of our reach. You got a gold jelly bean that you put in a door and it opens the door into like the dream room. Oh, okay. So you need two of them. Yes. That's what I was. Okay. So you take the first one, but you can't get the second one. Because the guy runs up the tree with it. Right. So this, this is a part where this puzzle is what I feel is really original. This is the one. I had no clue. I had no clue. I needed to help for this one. I needed big time help for this one. The idea that you move the dream catchers, fine, I understood that. Yeah. But I didn't understand the idea of, oh, I have to take a nap. All and right, yeah. See what dream that I'm going to have. But I like that. Yeah. At the time, I hated it. <laughs> but playing through a second time, looking through a second time, yeah, that is cool. It's a dream catcher. It's going to catch your dreams. You're going to see them just above your head. And you have to 
try each one until you find the one that is the song you're looking for. And now you can play it on the flute with a new button that you couldn't see. Yeah. And that and it, is that something that Sam Ross did? Is that one that's come from somewhere else? Because for me, that felt very original. I mean, I don't, no, definitely not going to sleep under a dream catch. That's a bit too on the nose. If they'd done that, I'd be copying. I like, yeah, I like this puzzle too. It's good. But again, things could be improved with it for sure. Like one thing, that lever is way too sensitive. And the fact that you've got to stop it yourself is, is a pain in the butt. Have it click and just move one over, you know? I agree. And the second one is, I enjoyed the dream, little dream bubble sequences, but a lot of them are repeated. I'd love to have seen like different ones for each one, but maybe they had more and they complicated the playthrough for the playtesters. Maybe they only narrowed it down to like, I think there's only about four. Basically, the monster chasing you, the hedgehog guy laughing at you, a nice dream about your brother, fight or finding your brother, and then the, the flute dream, yeah. You play the flute for the creature, the creature tosses down the golden jelly bean or whatever. Or throws poop in your face the first time if you don't know the, 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 the song. True. <laughs> but now you can go all the way through his house, his room, and on the other side is another part I just didn't get. <laughs> Yeah. There's a tree that kills you over and over. Don't know why. But play the flute again and every fruit will now ripen. Yeah. And the tree, I guess, likes ripened fruit on the bushes. So you do enough of those and then you can go through. The tree will break the flute. I know. I like that. It's like, okay, you won't be using that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Snap. This Aww. is done. I don't want you to be confused. That will never come up yeah, again. Yeah, even what does he do? He, t he holds you upside down, shakes out your pockets. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, it snaps your flute. Oh, There's a cutscene with a character who I refer to as the evil princess, carried on a palanquin by trolls. Yep. She gets out, looks around, and then they take off. And so you're heading in, well, the direction of her towers or her castle. Chapter three, Little Evil. Mm. There is a library where you're going to find some stones and a bell... There's a bunch of things you're going to need to do here. But before you do this, you need to, I think... You need the bell first. The bell's in the second tower. Yeah. Okay. So you got to solve that stupid platform puzzle. Which I also had trouble with. It's just a memory game, really, and my memory is not good, so... <laughs> it is. There's something about the way it starts, though, that got me. I think that it might be random. It is random. The beginning is random, so you have to... <sighs> you just it... have to walk across... The first one might not trigger it. The second one might not trigger it. It might be the third one that triggers it. And then and then you just got to work out, do I go left or right? Oh, I went up, I went up, I went up. Oh, and then you step on one, it goes back down again. So you got to do it all again. Right. Okay. Maybe I just seem to remember the first time I played it that it seemed to baffle me. I think because it was random and I didn't realize it. I thought that I was doing something to make it work differently each time. No, no, it's random. So do that. Get the bell. Mm -hmm. You're also... where? Did, do you remember where you get the fishing rod from? Was that the first In the floor? second floor of the library. Okay. So you've got that. You're going to go get a fish. Yeah. Then in the library, you're finding all these different stones. You're going to ring the bells. There are a couple of different ways that you can hide behind a plant or off to the side. I think on the second floor, there's a way you can do that so that... Just behind the books. The basically. librarian will... We'll just keep walking the other way so that you can get to the top. Scare a crow. Using a mask. What does the crow give you? A stone. And dangle the fishing line, the fish, so that the librarian will get very hungry and want to eat it but can't quite grab it, which gives you time to play what I think is a very frustrating stone puzzle. I wasn't a fan of this part, to be honest, because <laughs> it's like... Yeah, it just, it's, they feel, you just got to relearn rules for something, basically. They feel random. I know it's not, mm. but it felt that way. Oh, this one moves this much, and this one moves mm. this much. I normally like this kind of puzzle, but there's something about this one that really didn't work for me. And even just watching through the playthrough, I was just like, I, I don't really get what they're doing. This is a lot of trial and error. This would be the type of puzzle where I think I would just go... I'm going to keep clicking until I get it and right. <laughs> like push my way through. From that, you now will get a key to get into the last tower. But I think, is this where you have to go to the, the second tower 
do the second set of stairs, also the fishing rod. To yeah, yeah. So you hook one step, hook them, and then the the platform kind of comes out, and then you go up. And then you got to drop your fishing line down, yeah, and pull that so the last platform comes out. Then you got to use, use your fishing rod again to pull down the ladder so you can get up. And then you just drop the then fishing do, rod, so you know that you're done with yeah. it. And, and then, then you, you go do up the leap of faith, which I hated. <laughs> Because again, this is a game with really weak save checkpoints. Yeah, so you don't want to die. I don't want to die. What am I missing here? I looked it up first. I was not jumping. <laughs> right, yeah. And there's nothing, I feel like there's nothing really on the screen to indicate, hey, we're going to save you. Yeah. We don't see the ghost thinking, jump, jump. Uh, I'll catch you. <laughs> and I think this is a section where you actually should have that. I think that it should be there. We get into the final tower where, after a bit of a cutscene earlier, we know you that... see how monsters get made, basically, yeah. And also we see that she, yeah, she infected one with, like, a red mm -hmm. butterfly. The different colors have different meanings. And also it's now locked up. So we have to essentially take control yeah. of the creature. I was... It's, it's terrible. Like, I... <laughs> I really like this game, but I was baffled by it the whole time. That book that you're looking in for the recipes. Right. I knew what it was supposed to be, but the chemistry set, I just didn't seem to understand. It had so many different things going on. You have to put the potions in in order. There was a sort of lever thing with the vat at the end. There just seemed to be so much going on, and I didn't really feel like I ever understood it until I watched somebody else do it. Mm -hmm. And the book itself, I just didn't quite understand the instructions or what I was supposed to be doing. They went from the witch's brew where they put it on the wall in order mm -hmm. to giving us this jumbled journal of symbols. Right. And it's also complicated because you have to do two things, right? You have to create a butterfly. Mm -hmm. Then you have to steal a carrot that you're going to dip in chemicals. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, Which is a completely different leap in logic that I didn't appreciate. Getting the right butterfly made sense to me. Having to steal a carrot to put it in chemicals <laughs> to also do something else was just a step too far for me. Did you like that? Did you do it without having to look that up? Because I was, I was completely baffled. I think I did. Yeah, I don't think I took many hints towards the end. Once I got through the initial bits, like I said, like with that first part, not even knowing how to get into that the house, the game got easier as it went on. And yeah, it's like especially after that gauntlet of getting up that library tower of like all the things that you got to do and stuff. So this part was just like those chemistry set puzzles. It was okay. Getting the carrot though, I think I had to die a few times before I realized like, oh, I need a way to get rid of these guys now. You know, because you got to give them the carrot yeah so to poison them or something like that? Like, no you give the carrot to the creature to then you to, so that you can control it that's yeah. right yeah and then you go through and kill everything yeah and then you get an abacus puzzle which not my favorite puzzle anything with numbers yeah it took a few tries mm. but i was able to get it and then you get through the door into the dungeon where you can grab is it a butterfly so the the butterflies have come from the people. Yeah. And it's a sort of soul. And one of the... In a game of creepy images, seeing <laughs> the people <laughs> hanging in bird cages with just their heads in the bird cage was the worst <laughs> for me. Anyway. Yeah. It's like, and it's not just like there's one or two of them. There's like rows and rows and rows of them. You go down to the last one and bring your brother or friend whoever, back to life. The end. Yeah. That's it. I enjoy the simple story of it. I enjoy what was going on there. I enjoy the look of the game. In retrospect, there are some things like the Dreamcatcher puzzle, which just I could not get the first time. The, looking at it now, going, actually, that's a really good puzzle. I enjoy that. There are some others, like the Witch puzzle, and in particular, I think the Chemistry puzzle, that I think are still, for me, just a bit too abstract or a bit too many steps to make it fun mm -hmm. especially when you have to start from the beginning each time and do it over and over again yeah with the chemistry one there's a bit of trial and error because you can keep feeding the monster a 
bunch of different things, but I was never sure that I was feeding it the right thing. Yeah. A, definitely a, a checkpoint in the witches. What, like once you get down to the lower level, a checkpoint there would be beautiful. <laughs> like having to do the whole thing again is a pain in the butt. As far as the sequel, I will play it at some point. I don't know if I'll rush to play it right away, but I will play it at some point. I'll be interested to see now that it's fully voiced as well, what they do with that. I'm a bit worried about that. I think part of the appeal to me was the fact that you didn't need language to mm -hmm. understand the game. And I liked the fact that it had those images, those thought bubbles. That to me felt different. That felt special. And yeah, now it wasn't even subtitled. It was just images. Yeah. So you made up your own story kind of. I have a real thing for games. I love games that can convey their message to people of any language. And I think that that is a wonderful thing. When you start voicing it, I mean, that's going to be a lot more work on their part because now you have to voice it for all the languages. But also, if it's not voiced well, I am very particular about voice acting. And if it's not good, that could bring it down for me. But at the same time, if it's great voice acting, then it could elevate it. So I'm just worried that it's, it's adding a variable that's going to either make me like this one a lot less or it's going to make me like it a lot more. And it's a complete variable until I experience it. Yeah, the problem is that once I found that it was fully voiced, I already have what I want it to sound like in my head. And if it's not that, I'm not going to like it. <laughs> That's so dumb. But I've got this image. It's like, it's made by, what, what are they, the, a Danish developer? So I'm expecting some kind of cool Scandinavian voices in there. Some kind of Brothers Grimm fairy tale stuff and some, yeah, some kind of Scandinavian accents. I've got it right in my head, but if it's not, if it's cutesy and weird and just not creepy enough or strange enough, how I've got it in my head now, it's just because of this first game, because I'd already made it up in my head what they sounded like. And so, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how closely we match up. It's funny you say that because I didn't put a voice to them at all. I always do, man. If it doesn't, I read things in my head. So I, I'm the kind of person that reads every word because I'm stupid. So There's no words, though. But I mean, you know, I mean, like in a book, I'll read every word in my head like a five-year-old and I, I'll ha they'll have a voice. So even in this, when he's like dreaming about his brother, he's like, oh, where's my brother? You know, I've got things in my mind like, yeah, stupid things. You've added dialogue. Even the well. ghosts have, have uh, sounds. Gaps filled and more gaps created.